And if Teresa Rowe is here, she would be sure to instruct us on ringing a bell. We don't have no bell. Okay, so there you go. The reason we ring the bell is for some of us, that's a reminder that it's recess time or it's recess is over. But for today, we're glad that you're all here. We're here at um, the Living Well in Hershey. And um, I'm Dr. Penny Koval, and this is Kylie Koval. And um, we're here at our normal Tuesday Live and Learn series um, that meets every Tuesday at 12 o'clock. And since we um, spend the majority of our time caring for people throughout the community, but due to the circumstances of COVID-19, um, we're learning to use technology. So please bear with us because I can speak for myself and I think for Kai, we don't like to be in front of the camera, um, but we're not here alone. So just um, in, in our office this afternoon as we honor the social distancing and yet stay open to those people who need um, clinical care and, and the living well interventions that we provide, we are here. Um, and right now we have um, Steph Weissenweiss is the executive director and she's gonna be here help, helping field um, questions and participate in the conversation that we'll have and get started in just a minute. Kathy Frick is director of operations and she's also our living well nurse. So um, we're glad to have her. She can clarify any concerns that we have or that you may have relative to um, health issues. And Karen Gish is our director of integrity and she she helps us um, support families and individuals through the process of living well integration. And of course, Carly Koval is back there. She's helping us learn how to use technology a little bit more efficient and effective. So bear with us as we have a learning curve, but want to welcome you today to Live and Learn. Um, this is week four, and um, our Live and Learn series is much like um, a, a Alcoholics Anonymous, it's a, it's a support program. We kind of call it Wellness Anonymous, where we create a, an open forum where we talk a little bit about, about how to live well in mind, body, and spirit, but we also walk through the seven steps of living well. And every week, we, um, we pick a, a one, of the, one or two of the steps and we have conversation. And so today, which is week four, I'm gonna be talking about step six and step seven. But for those of you, who may be joining us to participate in this online, we're gonna encourage you to participate in the process. So if at any time through this conversation, you have questions, feel free to, to, you know, to write them and we'll respond to them and make it part of, of this experiential. At Living Well, we pride ourselves on, on connecting to people, creating spaces of unconditional love, and then creating an experience where you can learn how to be healthy in mind, body, spirit. So Living Well Lifestyle is a seven step um, program that walks through some principles that we have, um, we've had the privilege of learning from and with um, those people that we've served on how to, how to be healthy and whole. We talk about whole person health, um, Living Well Lifestyles. Step one is to take responsibility. And so in this season, um, particularly now where, where the news and, and so much of life is consumed by fear, we talk about how do we take responsibility to honor this situation and yet not be consumed by fear and yet be cautious and proceed with a sense of well-being. And so step one to living well is to take responsibility. And, and sometimes taking responsibility means you need to get other people to help you to be responsible. Step two is to renew your mind. And um, renewing your mind is something that may be difficult for all of us. If our mind is consumed by lots of thoughts, especially if they're negative thoughts. Um, we have a tendency to not be able to, to separate ourselves from, from that mind that just continues to bombard us with negative thoughts, which then distract us and oftentimes have us being disconnected from the present moment, as well as disconnected from our body, from our spirit, and even from other people. Kylie's laughing. I'm not, do, you have, do you want to say something? No. It's... The dog. Oh, we have a dog here too. Um, step three is to renew your spirit and and oftentimes when we talk about living well, a lot of people um, wonder what does renew my spirit have to do with my health? But I think particularly in times like now where we're, we know all of the physical signs of, of diseases and, and this COVID-19, but a lot of times we don't recognize the power um, 
of our own passion and our internal sense of of what we kind of can refer to as our, our spirit, our inner being of it can be consistent with faith, hope, and love. It can be it can be what's our purpose and what's our passion. So when we talk about renewing our spirit, for many people that um, that takes us on a mysterious journey that we oftentimes incorporate in living well as a very viable, important part of of your health and well being because. Um, there's a lot of resources, how to, you know, mental calisthenics, how to do mindfulness, to meditate, all that. But when we talk about renewing our spirit, sometimes um, we need a little bit of encouragement to recognize that right now in this season where many people are consumed by fear that sometimes finding things that renew your spirit are really helpful. Um, step four is to renew your body. Kai, you want to talk about renewing your body? Because mm -hmm. that's one of her favorite things to do. Um... Yeah, I think when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, um, their physical level or any form of connection to their body is typically pushed on the back burner. Um, and so kind of bringing that to more of a focus and incorporating that in stress management and an outlet for anything that people are kind of going through. Um, I do a lot of, of mindfulness and breathing and gentle stretching. We do our 3D balance class, which I guess I can talk about. We'll, yeah. We'll also be online tomorrow at three. Um, so we'll, we'll go over that. But yeah, I think renewing your body is just, like I said, focusing on your physical well-being. And that's not, you know, spending too much time in the gym. It's just kind of checking in with where's my body at? Um, how am I feeling head to toe? Um, because day to day, we probably do not focus enough on, on what's going on with us physically. Yeah. And it's funny because when we talk about renewing our body, a lot of times when we talk about health and even now, many of us may be preoccupied by symptoms and space and the physical, like how do I protect myself physically? So the interesting thing is, is that many of us um, may be preoccupied by the physical and many of us may also be disconnected from the physical. And so the goal in renewing your body is to kind of begin to allow you to become aware, like what is my relationship with my body? And so tomorrow at three o'clock, um, if you're interested in participating in that, I would encourage you to um, come dressed or prepared in front of your, your technology to be able to do some stretching because that's going to be an interactive physical activity that will teach you how to connect your body, your mind, and your spirit. Then steps, um, step five is to maximize your resources, which means you have to learn. I mean, we live in, we live in a world that has, um, we have accessibility to an abundance of solutions. The problem is is knowing what do we really need to solve the problem. And so that is a process um, by which we, we teach in Living Well Integration as to how do you determine where's the splinter, where's my pain? Is it in my head, is it in my heart, or my spirit, or is it in my body? So maximizing your resources, which is step five, really allows you to begin to, to examine what resources, both internally and externally, do I have accessibility to? And then how do I implement them in a way that's balanced so that they can be efficient and effective. And that leads us to the last two steps in the Living Well Lifestyle Program, which is step six, which is live life in 3D. 3D means connected mentally, physically, and spiritually. Um, and then step seven is how do I do it daily and sustain that level of well-being? So the purpose of our time together today is to kind of, again, we appreciate your patience as we learn how to do this online. Um, and, and the goal is to be able to provide an opportunity to explore what does it really look like, particularly in this time um, of being stressed out, isolated at times. Um, some of you may feel like this is a great break from the craziness of your life, and you're gonna look at this from a, a point positive perspective. Um, when we talk about point positive, that's been a, that's been a comment and a, a approach that actually S Stephanie brought to living well as, um, as a person who, Stephanie's spent a lot of time in nature and Nature RX is one of our programs, but, but we talk about pointing positive because if you're um, imagining kind of, and we can even imagine that in the situation we're in right now because we're, we're in an unprecedented times where no one's really exactly sure where we're going because there's a lot of unknowns. And so um, some of us um, determine our next step by by being aware of all the negative things and avoiding bad things. But the concept of point positive is used when you are, Steph, is it white water rafting? Yeah, white water rafting, when you're coming down, 
the guide um, will point to where you're supposed to go. So um, that, that may be a little difficult or different from some of you because if you're pointing positive, what you're doing is you're kind of minimizing um, some negative things that might be a distraction because you just want to look where you're going. And so the concept when we start talking about living life in 3D and when we talk about integration, I mean, for those of you um, who may not be familiar with the concept of mindfulness, mindfulness um, can also be um, a kind of living in the present moment, living in the now. So living life in 3D means that in this present moment, my body, my mind, and my spirit are all in, um, engaged in the present moment. So I'm not sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, what's this, you know, what are people going to think? What am I going to say? I'm living in this moment, um, taking in all that's happening, um, what's coming through my mind. We talk about thinking out loud is it's just my words are actually an expression of my thoughts and my feelings. But if I'm living um, in balance or in 3D, I'm just, I'm operating as a whole person interconnected within myself and to my external world. And so living life in 3D, practicing the point positive model means I'm just looking for where is, where do I place my foot that then carries my body that in, engulfs my mind and my passion that I can stand firmly in the next step. And so for some of us, um, this may be really difficult to do because we're, we're reading, we're you know, tuned into um, stories. We call it drama trauma. Um, our human nature um, is to, to be attractive to, to things that, that are dramatic, um, whether that's you know, TV shows that are real TV and talk about life as young adults or as we age, you know, how we're going to age. But, but right now, many people are consumed with, mm -hmm. with how do we sustain a level of well-being amidst this, this crisis. And I think um, it starts by, by doing an internal examination of what really is going on on the inside of me. Because if you're, if you're in a place where you're, you're confined to your home um, with family, I've, I've had the privilege of having conversations with some family members where kids are coming home from colleges, they're coming home from work or their inability to work. So people are confined in homes. And um, I think they say that the holidays are some of the most stressful times because you're, you're confined with family members and, and there's an expectation that everyone's gonna get along. And I think that's Nala, she's, she's one of our family animals. But, but sometimes being, being confined in your home creates a lot of stress. And so if that's you and you can't seem to point positive, um, I would just encourage you to, to find time and space in your home, go out for a walk, mm -hmm. that, you can, that you can begin to do some internal exploration to really find out what's going on in my body, what's going on in my mind, what's going on in my spirit. And, and if you've never been somebody who's journaled or writing some, write some of those thoughts down to begin to write down and really explore internally what's going on because you can continue to, you know, to pick up your phone and go on social media or listen to the news and be consumed by things that will create um, increased fear. And I want to believe that, that um, the facts that are out there, even though um, depending upon what news station you turn on, you'll get a different, a different perspective. Oftentimes in Living Well, we talk about different I'd, perspectives. I'd also say like fear and thoughts that come into your mind. Like it's like you look externally for something to like solidify that. So I think like if you have a negative thought, you're gonna go online and perceive everything as negative and, and supporting your negative thoughts. So I think, you know, the whole aspect of journaling is putting it down on paper, one, getting it out of you rather than just like sitting in you and looking at it and be like, how real is that? How, what is affecting, or what is contributing to the, that thought in my head? You know, um, is it something I saw online? Is it something I heard from somebody? Is it- Is it real? Is it even real or not? And I, yeah, I think that's yeah. where, yeah, I would go back and forth in times of journaling. I would open a book and then I'd spend months journaling and then I wouldn't, and yeah, I think we always say that if you don't address what's going on on the inside, whether that's comments or concerns or thoughts, it manifests internally and getting it out 
whether it's just on a paper that no one's going to read is a step forward. Just yeah. pointing positive. Yeah. So step six is, is to live life in 3D. And I think the concept is really very consistent for those of us who desire to live in the moment and to maximize the blessings of, of good things in this time as a gift. And again, I think that's not to deny the reality of what's going on and be sensitive to that, but to be consumed by fear oftentimes oppresses our ability to live in freedom. So before we step into step seven, I just wonder, Kathy, Karen, Carly, Steph, anybody have any thoughts relative to step six that you find to be helpful and would be helpful for any of our, our people joining us? They're all shaking their head no. Is that because I, I clearly articulated everything? Kathy, you're laughing. What's, what are you laughing about? Did you want to talk? Are we even live right now? <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody out there who has any questions? So Bethany said, I agree, Penny. I think a helpful thing to do is to create a daily routine that incorporates mind, body, and spirit to retain a sense of control in this crazy time. I would, yeah. I think about like the get-go from when like we were being like trapped in the home. I'm like, I need to stick to a routine, a pattern. And now, I mean, you're not, some are, aren't able to go to work or go out. And so you have this time to like think about what do I really want to do in my day to day? How do I want to do beneficial things to make me feel better, to distract me? And I used to, I mean, I'm trying to wake up at the same time that I wake up every day, get some kind of activity and maybe do meal plans. And like, yeah, I think we could sit and choose to, granted, I do spend half a day sometimes laying in bed doing nothing. But I think right now, like, you know, don't overthink it and just, I mean, the day's event, it's yours now. So doing things that are beneficial to you that you well, might never have the time before to do. Yeah. Like last night, the girls did TikTok. Did you want to, we probably should show that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's a creative time to be able to do that. The gift of time. Steph wants to remind us that, I mean, this, this is a gift of time. And um, we found that, you know, a couple weeks, um, we do, we do work. Um, with the county and we're we're honored to be able to serve people in the drug court system and families in CYS who have had crises and continue to um, to be lost and find ways to be to live well and so we talk about we we were really swamped a couple weeks ago I mean it just seemed like for some reason we could not get ahead of the pain that many of the families in our community were were enduring it and that was before the COVID-19 and so it was interesting because all of a sudden, um, a, lot of, a lot of things changed and then all of a sudden, we were not able to encounter face-to-face -face time and we weren't sure how to interact with some of the families and all of a sudden we found ourselves with the gift of time. And I think for those of you, particularly um, Bethany, I appreciate the, the suggestion of a routine. You know, if your routine has changed and yet you were, you know, you were used to, you know, doing something a large, you know, six, eight hours a day is I would encourage you to find a project that you've been wanting to do and, and take this time as an, as an opportunity to do that. Um, I think when we talk about living well, a lot of people think it's, it's a wellness program and that we're going to give you um, all the tips on how to be healthy and what to eat and how to exercise and stretching and mindfulness and creative expression. And, and we surely do that. But one of the things that I think um, we want to encourage you to do is that living well is about finding the source um, of truth and passion that's deep within you and really taking the time to be contemplative and really introspective to find out what what really goes on within me and then begin as Kylie said to explore some of that and sometimes it is a matter of journaling it and and getting into the flow of, of a stream of consciousness of what's really going on in the inside um, because we oftentimes, um, we're burdened. There's, we're burdened by busy lives. And um, it's like you have like this like go, go, go life of probably not much settled time to just sit there and think about yourself. And now you have like all this time and you can choose to fill it with positive or negative things. And I mean, I think we know that, you know, we get, we get calls and we get, we get people in need because they're stressed out and they're spinning and, 
and then the thoughts in their mind begin to manifest physical symptoms, which is very common with anxiety. So if this stressful time it creates anxiety for you, it's not uncommon to get headaches. You can even change your temperature. I mean, stress does crazy things to our bodies. And I think we need to we need to be mindful of that. And I think, you know, choosing choosing a positive approach, um, it's a choice. And oftentimes it seems like we get stuck spinning in our negative thoughts, and we really need to to begin to if we find ourselves in that place, to really just begin to gain a perspective that says, okay, wait, I can change my thinking pattern. Steph, were you going to say something? Um, Anybody have any questions relative to how they might up or not. how they might live in 3D? Those aren't questions. Bethany has a question and she's asking what would be your advice to those who do not have the option to take some up grocery, healthcare, first responders. There are so many like people out there that are willing to help. I think yeah. Now I think with the people people who have the gift of time um, want to give back. Well, and I think her, her question really points to the individuals that aren't able to take time off. How do they manage their stress? What are options, even if I think about stay at home parents that now have kids at home and are trying to balance working, how, what are creative ways to take small amounts of time and really reorient your perspective to stress management when you don't have the luxury of time like some of us yeah. do to use this as a gift? Yeah. Well, that's a good question. I think sometimes the people who are still working are likely in the service industry. And so their, their, their nature is driven to help other people. And so sometimes they're also the ones who don't know how to help themselves. And so I think Kai's comment is, is for those of people who have the gift of time to extend that act of kindness or to make meals for people who you know are working. And for those of you who are working, um, it's a great opportunity for you to learn how to receive. Because for those of us who, who are givers and servants of, of helping everybody else um, and, and, you know, the workaholic, so to speak, I mean, those oftentimes we don't know how to receive. And so one of the things I would encourage you to do is to, is to realize that you're not going to be able to sustain your own well-being unless you learn how to manage your own stress. And well, so, yeah, and I think, you know, the, those who are out working there, their hours have been lengthened i think carving certain time out and and protecting that time and being like i need this 15 minutes a day or i need 30 minutes a day of just doing whatever you know we talk about resetting your button and and i think you'll eventually go over these realizing like what do i need and how much time do i need to reorient myself to reset my button to go out and and conquer this day and really protecting that time, whether it's 15, 20, an hour, and whether it's breathing, meditation, um, a run, like I think now more than ever, use what you need to use to get yourself in order to go out and. Yeah, and when you're not, when you're not okay, to be able to acknowledge and say, I'm not okay. And again, I think this is a great opportunity for us to come together because, because it has, it kind of has disoriented us as a culture and as a community. And now's a good time to kind of reorient ourselves to the need um, to do this together. Because I do think there's people who are gonna have to continue to be on the front line to do what they need to do. And, and hopefully there's other people around that can say, hey, in order for this person to be able to do that, I can be helpful and, and provide that and learn how to do that together, which I think, I think culturally, we have, we talk a lot about the Declaration of Independence um, in Living Well, and I think we all desire to be functional, independent adults. Unfortunately, what it has, has created in the pathological response is we've created a codependent culture where we're codependent upon each other. And my hope would be if we want to point positive um, in this season is to figure out how do we do this together, honor the differences um, in our lives as well as how do we come together and really begin to share this burden and carry this burden together um, as a community that I do think um, we can learn some lessons that we would not have learned otherwise. Is there anything, I mean, is there anything else? The only other question would be to talk about what things are contagious. And I think everybody's real aware of what's contagious from a physical health perspective, but it's been amazing to hear some of the stories of the kindness and the compassion that's spreading throughout a community now. And even the idea of I think Kai, you had talked about 
resetting your button and if things irritate us, how do we clean off the fear and the darkness and the energy that's on us that's not life giving and productive? Well, it's funny, um, at Living Well, for those, for our care team, any of us who take care of people, and again, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a licensed provider or professional to know how to love and serve other people. But Steph's, Steph's question is, how do we reset our button? How do we make sure from the top of our heads to the tip of our toes that we are, that we are living in the best me that we can be? And so we talk about our breath. Um, you know, contagion, I mean, right now we're, we're becoming very aware of, of what we need to do to protect ourselves from, from this virus. But I think um, your, your comments direct us to the fact that loving our neighbors and being kind that also can be contagious. That there's an element of, of pay it forward, of, of extending an act of, of kindness where no one may ever know what you're doing. Now's the time to be able to do that. And if you find yourself in the forest of fear, where you find yourself that these negative thoughts are perpetuating you to a downward spiral, to just be able to have some people that love you and you love to say, hey, wait, let, let's take some time and space and reset our buttons so that we don't continue to, to end up in a really bad place. Because I do think, I mean, it is so difficult right now to discern exactly um, what's the appropriate thing. But I think if we can point positive and recognize that kindness, that, um, that a desire for connection both within ourselves, understanding who we are mentally, physically, and spiritually, and then with the people around us who we love, um, I think now's a great time to be able to exercise that, that approach to living. Um, I know at Living Well, we're trying to model that in partnerships with other people who are committed to, to, to engaging um, this experience as an opportunity to learn something that we wouldn't have learned otherwise. So yeah, the concept of a reset in your button and just being aware with your breath. I mean, and it's as simple as, and, and Kyle will get into this a little bit more tomorrow, but I mean, it's a simple five minute, is to really just sit and be still and just to catch your breath and to be present in the moment. And we talk about your five coming to your senses and just, you know, listening and, and taking in the visuals without, with, I mean, just receiving what life has to offer and trying to do that in such a way. I mean, there's lots of realities right now that we can't change. I mean, we can't change if, if we're in a home and someone's pushing our button and irritating them. We may not be able to change our our. The, how they're behaving, but we can change our response to that behavior. And so we can do that actually just doing a body scan of just becoming aware of what, what's really going on the inside and choosing positive over negative because that can be contagious too. And I think that's a good point to think. We've been, we've been dealt a, a pretty scary reality and, and I think there's, there's reasons to be cautious, but I think confronting fear with with a passion of love and faith, um, it's empowering to be able to do that. And, and it's not going to be easy. It's not like, you know, the red carpet's going to be rolled out and we're just going to take this walk. I mean, there's intention about it. You have to confront um, the double-mindedness, the, the fears that you may have in your physical reality that, well, we can all, all excuses of why we can't do something. But, but I think we can become better problem solvers um, get creative and and ask people, you know, I mean, we are, we live in, in a world full of information and I think we can choose to, to create barriers for information that doesn't give us life. Um, I mean, I think boundaries and barriers are important. They're important to keep things out that might hurt us, but it's also could be important to be able to open up an opportunity to knock on some doors and, and get the resources that we need so that we can live well individually, collectively as families and together as a community. So step seven, where are we at with time? So we're, we're halfway through. Um, we're gonna talk about step seven relative to doing it daily. Um, Karen, do you have any thoughts relative to, I mean, you've spent the last week working on a trail for Nature RX and, and what's happening out at the River Exchange. Do you wanna share it all? I mean, I think about the power of, of creativity and, and, and our imagination at this point and, and stepping in, into our dreams. And this is a, a great time 
to do that? Well, I think about that. Like you hear a lot of people like, oh, if I had the time, I'd do this. Or, oh, if I had the, if I, I mean, now we have time. And, and yeah, I think to your point of being creative, um, we've, we've talked in the house several times. Oh, well, what do we want to do with this time? Like paint the kitchen. Yeah, we have a list of things. And I think like that stuff to think about, like, you know, I have this time now. What do I want this to look like? And for those who like structure and things mapped out, like I bought a calendar. I'm like, today I'm going to, like, I bought like an agenda that I'm trying to set goals and explore, you know. With I this. thought you were always doing that with the calendar. I mean, you've got to do things all around the house that you, your lists. Now, now I have the time. <laughs> now you have the time. Well, and that's the other thing is, is that, um, yeah, it, it is how we choose to well, I think confront this time. Do it daily takes a lot of discipline. And um, do you want to start the next one? Well, we just taught you, we talked about, you know, living life in 3D and then finding things to reset your button. And for those who, who don't have all this love, like all this time, um, doing it daily, incorporating, you know, things that work for you in your in your day-to-day -day schedule and yeah. stick and do it that media. So the, the do it daily, um, Karen, thanks for that contribution relative to creativity. For some people, that may mean, you know, getting getting some paper and pencils and crayons or paint and, and begin to realize that maybe inside of you is an artist that's never expressed themselves. Um, others, it might mean, you know, I mean, I think this TikTok thing is hilarious. Um, for those of you who like music and dance, I mean, I think we do have the opportunity to get creative. And yet a lot of times when you think about stress, a lot of people, um, they don't feel very creative when they're stressed. So what if we think about exercising um, some creative expression as a way to, to confront stress? And again, it's gonna be a little hill that you have to, that you have to step over. But um, when I think, um, if we talk about why is step seven at the very end, I mean, if you look through all of our steps, um, renewing your mind, renewing your body, renewing your spirit, a lot of those middle steps require you to really focus on, on yourself and, and do a lot of internal work and doing it daily is at the end because you've explored your whole person health, your mind, your body, your spirit, and hopefully you've been able to know, you know, how do I reset my mind? How do I renew my spirit? How do I, you know, what activities have I found that work for my body that um, that work for me? And then, yeah, I think do it daily. Step seven it was intentionally at the end because you know incorporating everything that you've learned about yourself, about your past, and and moving forward, um, addressing it daily. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the things is there any other questions that have come in that we need to talk about? Because one of the things that we do here at Living Well is that, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's really ex been exciting to watch um, the Living Well family grow and our community expand as we take care of people and as other people who are passionate about, about community and health, um, we've, we've enjoyed the opportunity to gain partnerships. But the gist of Living Well, um, it, really, it really is as simple as this piece of paper. Um, if you want to, I think you can go onto our website and um, this is called Seven Steps to Live Well Recommendations, and it's, it's on our website, but it really, it, it lists the seven principles, and then on the back of it, it's a calendar that at the top half of it, it just is Sunday through Saturday and a.m. and p.m., and, and what we encourage people to do is that, is that you, you can begin to write down and journal what your activities, what are you doing, and then I would encourage you, beside those activities that you're doing, is to put a plus or a minus. So a plus would be things that bring you joy, that you enjoyed, that you liked, and minus would be, ah, that wasn't a whole lot of fun. And if you find that as you take an inventory of your life and your, your daily activities, if you find that you're spending most of your days doing things that you don't enjoy, you've got to start getting creative. Use your imagination. Call us. Talk to a friend. Find some things that really make you come alive. And, and if you spend two or three days and, you, and there's more negatives than positives in your daily activities, now's a great time to begin to do something different. 
So doing it daily is, is gaining understanding of what's going on on the inside of you and then beginning to walk it out in, in partnership with other people. The, the bottom half of this page will then tell you uh, what are these activities do I do um, that take care of my body, my mind, and my spirit. So some of us may be more dominant um, to taking care of our physical bodies. We might be preoccupied by going to the gym and the foods that we eat and making sure we look and do certain, all the right things. But if we're preoccupied by the physical, but our mind is, is continuing to tell us that we're not enough or it's, it's, it's not right or, or you're stupid or you're whatever, then it doesn't matter what we do because what we think is overriding and so that our mind and our body are disconnected. And then when you add the third dimension with how does that make me feel? I mean, I think a lot of us, we're, our, our expression, our external expression of what we're doing um, is confused or, or maybe not as pleasant because our mind's telling us to go, our body to go this way and our spirit's telling us to go that way. And so, or our body, our physical desires, our flesh is moving us in one way and our spirit wants to move us in another and our mind's going, uh-oh. So that concept of, of disconnection oftentimes is, is inside of us. And yet we believe, we see it manifest in the conflicts between people. I mean, I think of our house. I mean, you know, dad and I, and we've got three young adult children still in our home. And, and sometimes I go into my house and I think, oh my gosh, we've got five adults two dogs and two cats um, living in this space. And sometimes it's an amazing thing. And I mean, like a half hour later, it's like World War III. And, and sometimes you can even begin to say, who contaminated the space? Like whose energy or whose words or whose actions began to completely create a problem? And so when we start talking about, about living well and doing it daily, we first, the only thing that we can change is ourselves. Or our response to other people and so this this concept of of living well of this recommendation it really it's just an opportunity to begin to explore and so like I said some people are really preoccupied in the physical and when you look at when they look at their lives they spend a lot of time consuming things and doing things and it's they're tangible things and yet inside they're empty and at time, I mean, that can be me. One minute I feel like, oh my gosh, I love life. This is awesome. And the next minute I'm like, what am I doing? It's like Forrest Gump. He's just running, 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 running. And then all of a sudden he's like, okay, I'm done. Well, how long was he working up to being done? And so this process of, of self-exploration gives us an opportunity to begin to understand ourselves a little better. Some people live in their head. They, they don't make a move physically unless they have complete understanding of what's all the details in their mind. Some people live from their heart and they're like their mind, they're not even thinking, that's me. A lot of times my response and my passion to serving people is, is from a, a basis of my intention and my intuition. I'm grateful, I've been educated, I've, I've, I've been taking care of people for a long time. I've learned a lot. And many of those lessons I've learned from the mistakes I've made. I'm grateful that if you look around living well, we have a very diverse group of people. Oh my goodness, sometimes it's the most amazing experience. The next moment, it's not very fun. Well, I'd also touch on like, what do we mean by diverse? So I think we look at like mind, body, and spirit, and you know, what do you lead with? So you said you lead with spirit. Uh, we have people on the team who lead, I think I'm more of a um, consumed by the body. Um, people lead with their mind, and so when you're, let's say you're all consumed in spirit, but somebody's all consumed in mind, like that can clash. And you have to realize like, okay, like I've got to let my mind and my spirit and my body kind of catch up with, yeah. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to look around and be like, I could probably pinpoint everyone's like pattern in here. And um, yeah, and sometimes you are, I mean. Go for it. I, I don't even know how to word it. Like, like it takes somebody to like say, like, look at what, look at what you're doing. Like, this is how. Yeah, put the mirror up and be like. Yeah, we talk about glass and mirrors a lot. And that is that when we get to spend a lot of time with each other, and I think for those of you who are at home, whether you're isolated or you're interacting with other people, it's a great, I mean, it's been really cool to watch people learn how to live in 3D because you look at a person and, and I become students of the people that I work with. 
And that makes me a better student for myself of knowing who I am. But that interconnection, I mean, we, we call it living well integration. It is the integration of all things, of all different types of people. And so, yeah, doing it daily is just a continual reminder of going back to the seven, to the other steps to say, okay, who's responsible? Am I responsible? Am I overly responsible? Am I irresponsible? Am I overly responsible for my body, but irresponsible for my spirit? Um, when, I, when I talk about renewing my mind, is my mind full of negative things? If it is, then everything I perceive, everything I read, everything I see, all my senses are gonna translate that information through a negative filter. And so if, if my mind is negative, I've gotta find a way to renew it and, and, and figure that out so that I can gain um, a point positive perspective. And again, some people would say, well, that's unrealistic or you're eternally optimistic. And I'm thinking, you know, we can choose if we wanna be our glass to be half full or half empty. The reality of is that a glass who has, is half full and half empty, it's both and. There's water in part of it, and then it's empty in the other part. And until we're willing to embrace all of it, we're never going to be able to sustain it over time. So doing it daily means we have to embrace the good and the bad and learn how to do that within ourselves. Because sometimes it's easier to accept the positive and the negative in others than it is in ourselves. And again, I think... You know, stress during these times of wanting to boost your immune systems and be healthy. Um, what you put in your mouth relative to the foods and, and the words that come in, come out of your mouth and are received from other people, um, you know, that those are very powerful tools that can either bring us life or destroy us. And I think at times when we talk about boosting our immune systems um, and being well, we need to learn to be well mentally, physically, and spiritually. And if physically you're feeling a little run down, then you need to find ways mentally and spiritually to lift yourself up. If physically, you know, if, if mentally you're feeling down, you need to find ways to, um, to lift yourself up. And so as Kylie pointed out, sometimes the challenges we have um, as we co-labor is that we all see things from a different perspective. And sometimes you need to take a step back and kind of orient yourself. We say we live in a world where we, we you know, do glass and mirrors. And that means glasses that we try to be transparent. Um, Kathy loves to think out loud. So if anybody's ever interested, you can just call into Living Well, talk to Kathy Frick, um, thinking out is. loud, like just, just, you know, what are you thinking? Um, or she's making faces. That probably is not a good idea. Well, can, I think, yeah, anybody on our team, you'll get a different, um, response from you'll get yeah I think it's important to have a diverse group and that's why I mean like when you come to living well you don't just have one provider yeah you've got a team of people who are all masters of or she's a master's but well I mean to some degree we're trying to master our area of expertise and we would encourage you guys to find what are, what are you what are you passionate about and what's your expertise because I think some people they we, you know, we may feel worthless. Um, so one of the things I've got, how many? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So, so doing it daily. Do we have any questions? Kath, Steph, Karen, Car. So good you guys are here with us. It won't be long and they're going to be sitting in these seats and we're going to be sitting back there making faces and hiding ourselves in our shirts and stuff. But yeah, Kai, Kai came in this morning. And she's like, I'm not going to be there. But Kathy and Steph and Karen told her she had to. And since she's, she doesn't listen to me, but she'll listen to other people. She'd be good. Um, so doing it daily. This, this, this piece of paper, the front side of it is the seven principles. And it, it kind of takes you through like a self um, explanation to really begin to explore those seven principles to find out how do I really take care of myself mentally, physically, and spiritually. One, we take responsibility for ourselves and our response to other people as best as we can. And then the next three steps are to renew your mind, your spirit, and your body. Then once you know and are aware of what's going on in the inside of your body, mind, and spirit, step five is to maximize your resources. Six is to integrate them, which means you need to learn how to put them all together. And then step seven is to do it daily. And so, you know, we're grateful here at Living Well. We have a, like, like, 
Kai said, and hopefully we, you caught a glimpse of us and what we stand for. But a lot of people ask us, um, you know, how do you how do you sustain um, a life well lived? And I, I think it really is. It's one day at a time. It's be kind to yourself because we're all going to fall short, make mistakes. Um, and I've learned in my own life that sometimes the mistakes I've made um, have taught me a lot more than the things I've mastered. Um, but but there's we have we have little satchels in the office. Um, we have some tools that we use to help people walk through a process of integration. But one of the things I wanted to leave you with relative to how do we how do we get through this season um, that I think is going to challenge us to be to be as good as we can be um, mentally, physically, and spiritually so that one, we can learn from this tragedy and two, um, hopefully it'll help us be more connected as a culture. Um, and so the whole concept of declaration of independence, our desire is that the codependency that we may have um, in our culture, that we can turn it into interdependency. And I think these four household items, um, are, are the tools that I would say when, whether it's a physician, a scientist, a doc, a mental health provider, a chaplain, a, a community leader, a businessman, someone says, you know, Penny, what are, the, what are the primary principles necessary as I walk through those seven steps? What do I need to have um, to, to maximize my level of well-being? Um, I put this together a long time ago and it's been interesting to watch how people um, explore and experience this little exercise. So what I have sitting on the, on this, the table here is I have a Hershey kiss um, and we are from Hershey and we're grateful um, to live in this community. But the Hershey kiss is significant um, for a number of reasons and we'll talk about that. We have a button, a safety pin, and a penny. And so these four household items are going to give us the opportunity to, to think in 3D and, and process um, this experientially, um, but also we'll give you food for thought as we leave you today. So we'll start with the kiss. And so we know that in order to be healthy and whole, that love is an essential ingredient. Um, you know, I think they've done all kinds of research and we can research the power of love, the importance of compassion, um, but the interconnection um, that allows us to feel to feel loved um, is really important. And so for those of us who may not be feeling well, um, I just would encourage you to, to begin to acknowledge the reality and the desire to be loved. And sometimes when we're in solitude, that love needs to come from, um, from within. And, and I believe, um, you know, living well, we, we don't profess a specific religion, but, but I can tell you that all of us are divinely inspired by the one that has created us. And it looks different in all of us, and it probably looks different for those of you out there, but, but if you don't know how to love yourself and receive the gift of love, it's not likely that you're gonna be able to experience it from anybody else. And if you don't feel love at some point in time, that disconnection will result in a pathological process that will not likely serve you well in your health and well-being. So the Hershey kiss is about, about love and about the need for hugs and kisses. Um, it also um, is a reminder that a lot of us as a culture, um, during stressful times, we eat um, with the desire to satisfy the deepest part of us. And I would just encourage you to proceed with caution because um, a little chocolate um, is a pleasure and um, is meant to be enjoyed. But if you start eating a whole lot of it and it doesn't give you a belly ache, um, that's probably an indication that you're eating too much. So um, I would say um, you need lots and lots of love, but if food is a source of, of comfort for you, um, proceed with caution over these next couple weeks as life might be a little slow. Um, the safety pin. So the safety pin, when the sharp edge is tucked in the metal, um, you're, it's, it is a, a household item that is used to interconnect things. Um, it makes them safe and secure. And so for a lot of people who may not feel, um, feel well and have compromised health, mentally, physically, or spiritually, some of it has to do with the fact that, that you're not connected. 
you're not connected within yourself and you don't feel connected to your external environment. And so, um, yeah, a safety pin is a very, a very, um, a very important reminder of the importance of feeling safe and secure and being interconnected. And so, um, yeah, for those of you that resonates with, you know, stick a safety pin on your sleeve or something to remind you that you need to overcome that, that problem by feeling connected first within yourself and then with other resources externally. The penny, um, this is, this is a, a, a household item that, that nowadays is probably not of a whole lot of, of worth relative to you can't, I don't even think there's a whole lot of penny candy out there anymore, excuse me. Um, but a lot of people that we take care of in living well, whether they have physical, mental, or spiritual issues, a lot of them um, experience pain and suffering because they don't feel valued or worthy of receiving the gift of love, the gift of life, the gift of health and well-being, the gift of healthy relationships. And so if you're a person who when you sit alone and you don't value or experience a sense of of worthiness, whether that's to a divine connection or to a relational connection with people, um, I just would encourage you that, you know what, I mean, you know, I think I think this life that we have is meant to be lived together. And, and if you don't feel valued and worthy, um, all the money in the world, all the health, all the stuff, all the information, all the resources are not going to satisfy your innermost being if you don't realize that you're valued and you're worthy. So the penny, if that's you, stick a penny around the house, stick one in your pocket or whatever. We had a, we had a, a friend of ours one time from Living Well who made a necklace with all of these items. It was so awesome. But a penny is an important component because, because there's some things that money can't buy and health is one of them. And so I would just encourage you if, if you feel like value and a sense of worthlessness is a problem for you, um, I would just encourage you to, to find a way um, to experience life in 3D and, and figure that one out. The last one is the button. The button, um, yeah, that's a, a reminder that we all have buttons that when they're pushed, um, it, gets, it gets ugly. <laughs> so the goal is to find out, to, to begin to understand what, where are your buttons and, and who pushes them? Do you need to establish some balance and boundaries so that you can be a bit more resilient? Or, or do you need to learn to manage your buttons and, and keep distance from those things that create problems for you? So managing your buttons, learning how to reset your button. I always think time and space are a great resource when it comes to resetting your buttons. So these four household items are, are very simple reminders of, of ways in which we can can use some intrinsic um, thought processes to help us um, live well in mind, body, and spirit. So Kai, just to propose to ask if they have any questions. See more. Anything else? Just a reminder, tomorrow we'll be on Facebook and Zoom at three. That's two again. And YouTube for three. And you, we'll be on YouTube. Yeah, we're going to be on challenge. And so I think Kath and Steph, we're going to are we going to post this to Facebook? So if you guys found this to be valuable, um, and I think our goal is over the next couple of weeks, we have no idea how long this um, this little experiential is going to go on. But I think we're going to try and be pretty creative and provide some online resources for those who have needs. We also um, Steph's passion is Nature RX and. Um, while some of the facilities around some of the parks are closed, the trails are open and with weather pending, um, we're gonna try and uh, make sure that we can be available to meet people outside um, and to be available by FaceTime if anybody's in a crisis and feels like you're spinning and you can't, you can't find your way. Um, I'm sure that there is a way and we'd be happy to help you or help you maximize your resources because it's likely that probably within your own sphere, um, there are some things that could be a blessing to you. So just want to thank you from our Living Well family here. Um, to all you guys out there, we appreciate your time and, and bless you as you live well.
Thank you.